Hi, and welcome back to art. <sighs> People don't know, like, I think by now everyone's like quite familiar with the fact that I am an accomplished visual artist. Of course. I work in the visual medium. Those yes. would be the ones that you experience with your face testicles. <laughs> um, but I'm also, you know, I do a lot of other things. Like, I'm in a Queen cover band that aims to remove the stigma from STDs. I perform under the stage name Freddie Hurts to Pee. <laughs> and, you know, you just gotta take the edge off. It's okay if it comes out with a little bit of fire. Mm. Shows you have pep. It's like the way they judge um, a Saiyan child on its scream. You know, comes out, comes out with a bit of heat. Got some chili, got some kick. Like a ghost chili. It hurts a lot. I'd imagine so. Mmm. Alright, so... Like Tristan Zara, I am defining my own art as I create it. You know, like... Like a dartist. I just, you know, it's like I conjunct and I get this bit and it's like making one of those Transformers that you ever have Rekgar? He was a cunt. He had two wheels which you'd lose. <laughs> you would always lose. They are like sliders, they just go to other dimensions. Like, I think the real wheel was played by John Rhys Davies. <laughs> Um, for did. at least two seasons. That makes sense. And then Jerry O'Connell's fucking retarded fish-looking brother, he took over for the front wheel for a while. And that was a shame. That kind of ruined Rekgar for me, mm. I think. I stopped watching it after that. Okay. So today, I have a challenge for you. Uh, this one is called Trico. There are no challenges in art. Okay. I don't even know that. This one's called Trico. 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 Okay. You know, like, it's important. Where's my thing? Where's my art button? There we go. Hello, old friend. You and me, we're gonna make stuff together. So, in you know, a regular city in downtown anywhere, there lives a building. <laughs> and, you know, this building is, you know, it's home to a lot of workers. And, you know, the building has windows, because they like to not just lock the workers in to, like, a fucking shit cupboard that- GO TO THE THING! To, like, a shit cupboard, where they have to work just all the time. Because that's no fun. You know, I did that for a little while, I did the office thing, and it's... You know... It's like Game of Thrones, but with only marginally less incest. Um, same amount of poisonings, though, weirdly. There's just a lot of poisonings. And... So, Trico... Is essentially like this giant... You know, he's one of those high-concept Pokemon again. <laughs> um, where... He's a giant building... <laughs> that is essentially an entire business. Right. And that's... Like, that's the tricky part... Of Trico. Um is you know where he's a multinational trico and that's uh that's one of his attacks actually it's mm, multinational. multinational um that can bind opposing companies ah um and uh now that's so you'd think trico being green but it's not it's in red because they're actually they're actually a little <laughs> bit like the coca-cola company so that's Trico, and see, now you might be thinking, like, well, alright, you know, how does this business operate? Well, down the sides, you see, he's got, like, the mighty strangler fig, which is actually a parasite, you see. Hmm. So a little bit like Parasect, you know, there's these bits run down the sides, and there's little... There's little crannies and nooks <laughs> and other places you can lose the children you're supposed to be looking <laughs> after and everyone everyone gets pissy about that. I mean like it's not like it's not like you had them that long. You know? It's not like you've had them that long, is just what I'm saying. I'm not saying you can't be attached. Like, but just 
You know. Hmm. You know. Don't, let's not get silly about this. Children have to grow up sometime, you know? I'd say that's a big problem with the world today, is we don't let the kids, you know, we don't let the kids play, we don't let them grow up, we don't send them into the forest to deal with the things that can live in there, like treecos. You know, and they don't, as a result, you know, I just don't see them learning as much as they used to. Like, the kids today are just getting dumber and... That happened. Why does that keep happening? I fucking <laughs> ah! Okay. Whoop. He's partially black. On his mother's side. Oh, now that's happening again. <laughs> Alright, for some reason my size has gone down. I've gone limp. See, this is this is what's like messing up my art. There's like there's talk of children not getting the education they want, and that freaks me out. You know, that's that's my, that's my dual, see I did a dual degree, so I've got like art and like teaching and whatnot. Cause you gotta teach the little buggers, don't you? You of know course. You know what I mean? You gotta teach the little buggers. So like is kind of like if a wig Got some um, Brussels, no, some Brussels sprouts. What are those little things called? The little sprouts, bean sprouts. So a wig and some bean sprouts met, and they were at a very low point in their lives. And you know, not everything was going great, but that's, you know, you can take an awful lot of consolation in just physical company at times. You know, you don't need it to be real. You don't need it to be a big thing. You just, you just take your happiness where you can get. So some bean sprouts and this wig. Hmm. They had one of these little moments where things weren't going so great, you know, each of their lives had different twists and turns, and then the Trico, you see, is the sort of natural offshoot of that. Right. You see, you've got um, the wig and the bean sprouts, they become a thing, hmm. and an item, if you will. Um, and that item, uh, it, it, it lives and it breathes, and it sort of droops down over the individual, poor individual wearing the wig. And I mean, really, like, just be bald. Like, that's, you don't need vanity these days. Yeah. Like, you just get your dome wax. Um, I hear buffalo cum is great for that, because it's got <laughs> a natural kind of, it exfoliates as it repairs. Mm. Um, and you want something that does two things at once. So the wig, and the bean sprouts, and this bald vein dude... Are like walking down the street and now they're one thing and what they do then and see we're gonna get like the life cycle of, of, of this going over here so you know we start off we've got like we got the bean sprouts and then you know it's a brown wig because dude wants to dude wants to pass as normal and not like a filthy bald cunt and then the bean sprouts and the wig and the face under it, they go and they get a bank loan. <laughs> and the bank loan is then invested into Trico. And Trico mm. is a vertically integrated multinational business concern that purchases items based on what they may one day be worth and keeps liquidity in its own market for the bitcoins because it blocks chains and once the bitcoins are done it then sells them it on sells them so it's kind of like a wholesaler so it buys the bitcoins which are like bunch of Warcraft gold that people take seriously and then it comes out and that goes off into the world and people buy you know they use the bitcoins to buy the bean sprouts and you see the whole the whole cycle then repeats like this is how you the the the, the nice the natural biology of the trico continues and you know then it meets some other loser with a wig 
And, you know, those fucking tragic cunts that just can't let go. Yeah, there he is. There he is with his fucking rug. Look at him. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> God. Get some fashion. So that's the kind of life cycle of Trico. And Trico is, um, you know, pays its taxes. It has to. Um, you know, because that's how it, its taxes go back to subsidizing the farmers that grow the bean sprouts. So it's actually kind of just a roundabout way of saving itself money. Mm. Which is sort of cunning. And people will often argue that maybe Trico should sort of not be able to divest itself into overseas markets that maybe don't pay much taxes and then cite all its national earnings as a loss mm. because it's apparently not making any money because all its money is living overseas. You see, all its money is on a holiday with Ron. And it spends a lot of time, like, kind of vacationing with Ron. And Ron's pretty cool about that, actually. You know, he never tries to force itself on the money. Um, which is classic Ron. Like, Ron is a class act. I mean, you could, Ron's the kind of guy, like, you can just leave your girlfriend alone with him and he won't be like, here's my penis. <laughs> Even though he could. He could. He could. Because he has, you know, he'll, he'll, he'll do that a lot anyway. Cause, but, you know, it's Ron, so we kind of let all that slide. So, you know, he'll do it, but he won't. So, Trico, you see, is part of what we call an economy. And this whole thing is like a living life cycle of the Pokemon universe. Because, you know, it's not enough that you can just generate electricity or be a fighting tadpole or... Whatever the fuck rapist thing Lickitung is. <laughs> this is what makes the world go around. And unfortunately, Joseph Stalin tried to murder all the Tricos in his Soviets. And that was unfortunate. That was a genocide of the Tricos. That's a dark day in Pokemon history. And that's, you know, that's, that's me busting out some of my history knowledge there for you. So you've got Trico who's kind of, and he still shows, you know, he's got a little bit of green on top, because that absorbs the light, which is free, you see. So that's just, that's a good business sense. That's, you know, it's kind of part <laughs> of what, um, the business acumen is what they call that, acumen. Um, so he's like just having free light. You know, mm. that's, that's, that's how he eats, and saves a lot of money. Um, and he's actually, you know, he's, he's sort of remarkably mobile, because he's on these big green tank treads that wow. can move him around. He doesn't like to, because sometimes he can accidentally move into higher tax brackets. <laughs> and those are unfortunate. So he, 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 he prefers to be stationary, can move. Uh, much to some of his, you know, the opposing mm. trainers' surprise. And, um, you know, the trainers, catching him in a Pokeball is a little bit difficult on account of him being essentially a large downtown building. Mm. Um, some of his other floors, you know, they have, like, a... They sublet. Um, so Trico, you know, you'll find, like, occasionally there's, like, bars and some so other... So what sort happens of... if you catch a Trico in a wall while there's people inside? Um, oh, they become your Pokemon, too. Yeah. See, again, this is, this is one of the more complicated elements of, you know, Pokemon like Trico, is, you know, you'll... Now you've got also Dwayne from Accounts. <laughs> and, you know, he's a nice enough guy, and it's he's, he's more complicated. He's a high level. You have to be a high level trainer. Mm. It's like Charizard. You don't just fucking have a tree. Here's your first Pokemon son. Have a fucking Trico. That's not how this works. You get, like, the little fucking bean sprouts, and then you can maybe one day, if you fucking work really hard, get a mm. Trico. Because then you've got Dwayne from Accounts. And um, he's guaranteed to sort an awful lot of your shit out. He'll make sure you never run out of attacks. That's, like, that's a side benefit. Mm. That's, a, that's a lot of things people don't know about Trico, because, you know, he's, he's big and he can take, you know, he takes a lot of damage. People get, like, three attacks on him per round before he can move, because he's just so damn slow. But, never run out of attacks. Janus from HR will <laughs> keep you from getting your sexual harassment lawsuits, which, you know, is important in this day and age. Because, mm. you know, apparently that's what a loincloth is. And I'd have thought that the loincloth was my business. But it isn't. That's, you know, the way the world's changing. I don't like it, but, well, here we are. And so this, yeah, so what you've got here is, you know, we got the bean sprouts that Trico makes. They get onto losers with wigs. The losers with wigs and the bean sprouts and the wig, they all kind of get together and they invest. And they're like, oh, you know, maybe if I have money, women will touch me. And that's not true. But then they invest and they get 
sort of a regional business. They go upstairs, they go to look at the stars and wonder where their life went. And they fall over and die, and then the wig and the bean sprouts will spiral down over the building. The building will come to life in its own terrifying, nightmarish sentience. That life, that life spectrum, that morphogenetic field, will seep down through the employees, and they'll all become a little bit like we don't think about our kidney cells or our mm. liver cells. That's like Dwayne's like a kidney cell, and Janice is like, you know, a liver cell. And they all have roles and things to do, and like parts to play in this sort of grand scheme of things. And that is how Trico, you know, produces oxygen, light, and uh, financial stability <laughs> for the world. And that's Trico. Ah. Okay. There you go, Trico. Excellent. So, let's bring up the old... Let's have a look at what... That's just a gay lizard. Not a gay lizard. More like homo. How does he contribute to the economy? Alright, so... This is what Nintendo's representation of your... Character looks like. Well, there's a lot of similarities. Okay, right? so... He's called Trico. Because there's a tree gecko. That's it. Uh, so you took it a little deeper, and that's that's just the artist. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's the, the price I pay. Yeah, there's no, you know, there's no kitty end of my pool. <laughs> it's just you go to one end, it's like nine feet deep. You're like, oh, that's a bit scary. So you go to the other end. Guess what? Twelve feet deep, and that's even scarier. There's nothing but depth. You know what the center of the pool is? So deep, it's the top of the fucking pool. You don't even know you're already in the pool. I'm in the pool. Yeah, that's it. You know, we're pool all in your pool life. Now. You can't get out. There's no life vest. There's no life saver here. There's no no one on duty. You're just in the fucking pool. And th there's, you know, fucking Trico's. Hmm. Yeah. So. Any final words on this piece? Um, I think this is worth every penny. How much do you think this would one would retail for in a gallery? Well, in a gallery, I mean, you have a set price. You don't, yeah. you know, this isn't like a... This isn't like the maelstrom of uh, How much do you think auction. it would go for in a gallery? Oh, minimum five grand. Five no, grand? You don't go beneath that. No, I don't get out of bed for less than five grand. That's, <laughs> you know, this is, this is, you know, I'm like the Lady Gaga of sitting in front of a thing and drawing shit. And you have to have, you have to hold yourself to stand, you have to have high standards. Otherwise, you never wind up draped in meat at an award show. <laughs> And Something what is your for. life if you haven't had that fucking happen? Like, really? I know. I mean, I started, like, testing it out with just, like, a meat vest. <laughs> um, I did make some, like, saucy sausage earrings, which are actually really nice. Um, <laughs> problem is Australia and the flies. You can that's just go place. outside and they can cook, and then by lunchtime you can eat them. Yeah, and that's, you know, the oil helps with the sunburn. Mm. It's, see, this is, we're getting like Trico with the cycle and the habitat and the thinking of ecosystems and indigenous lifeways mm. and Native Americans and fucking yeah. It's deep. Like my pool. Till next time, cunts. <laughs>